Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Uh, my name is Lindsay Funtick, and I am the coordinator of volunteer ministries at Ashland First United Methodist Church. And every Thursday, I hop on here to share a little bit about what the Lord is teaching me and some of my devotional thoughts for this week. So welcome to everyone. Um, here in Ohio, it is, almost feels like fall this morning, so it gives me these little glimmers of hope. Uh, so I know Pastor Allen, if he watches this, will roll his eyes, but I like the little, uh, little cool days in the midst of a nice summer. So anyway, I hope this finds you well. And this week, uh, I have been thinking a little bit about how I've been feeling a little dry spiritually. I have had a lot of things going on the past couple weeks. I'm slowly getting back into my routine after um, some really good, fun weeks, time away, time in licensing school. Um, but I find that when I'm busy, when there's a lot going on, even a lot of good things, um, I still try to connect with the Lord. Um, but sometimes I find my, my times with him growing just like shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, my prayer is sort of being kind of like darts that I throw in God's direction as opposed to any sort of real sitting down in the presence of God. And I, uh, begin to feel this. I begin to feel the weight of prolonged lack of connection, I would say. And, um, I'm wondering, has anyone else felt this way? I get the feeling that I am not alone, um, that sometimes our the busyness of life uh, causes us to lose our connection or kind of numb the connection line between us and true life, life itself. So I've been kind of thinking this week about getting out of that slump and um, asking the Lord to help me on the process. So one of the things that always helps me is reading um, when I'm kind of in a in a slump. Um, and so this week I picked up this book, uh, "Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership" by Ruth Haley Barton. And I'm not; it's not new to me. I was introduced to it in seminary, and it seems to keep coming up. So um, I was like, "Okay, God, you've been prodding me with this one for a little bit, so I will pick it back up." And I'm really glad that I did. Uh, Ruth Haley Barton is a former pastor, and now she um, pours into pastors. Uh, so those of us who um, try to lead spiritually, who sometimes feel spiritually dry. And so she's got a wonderful ministry. And so this book is about leadership, but it's also about life. And I think it can connect to a lot of us. And so I... Uh, there's one quote on page 19 that has really just kind of stuck with me. It says, truly the best thing any of us have to bring to leadership is our own transforming selves. And that's just so good um, because it's true that if, if we want to be in leadership, uh, if we want to be any sort of spiritual guide, no matter what that looks like, we also have to be tra being transformed. We have to be um, our transforming selves. Um, but I, with uh, all due respect to Ruth Haley Barton, I just did a little bit of uh, paraphrasing uh, for our purposes today. And so I'm going to say today, truly the best thing any of us have to bring to life is our own transforming selves. So we hear a lot about what it means to uh, live your best life. Like I'm living my best life today. Um, you don't have to scroll through Instagram for long before you have a million suggestions about how to do that. Um, and some of those things are good. Uh, it's good to try a new moisturizer or mascara every now and then. Um, but I've been kind of thinking about kind of my own sort of dryness as well as what Ruth Haley Barton has to say. Uh, it's like our transforming selves. When we bring ourselves as we're being transformed by God, that is how we live our best life. And so I've been thinking about transformation and how to show up um, as our transforming selves. And the first thing I think we need to know is that transformation is done, happens in God's presence. Um, so when we feel a disconnect from that presence, we begin to show up to life, not as our transforming selves, but just kind of in our own power, um, in our own humanness in our own, um, sometimes when we're feeling really dry, just kind of like a husk of a human wearing a mask. And so 
when we're feeling that disconnect from God, it's hard to be our transforming selves. It's hard to show up as the Lord would have us show up. So to this morning, I just want to talk a little bit about getting out of slumps and getting back into or back onto the road of transformation. So the first thing, when we start to show up to life in our own power, um, when things have distracted us, when life has gotten busy, the first thing to know is that God is not mad at you. I think that so often when we sort of, um, I'll say stray or kind of drift or get distracted, sometimes it's completely, you know, innocuous. We didn't mean to, but all of a sudden we look back and we're like, oh, oh, where, where's God? <laughs> you know, um, I think that a lot of shame prevents us from turning back to God and seeking the transformation that only he can bring. So I think the first most important thing about getting out of a spiritual slump is to know that God's not mad at you. He's waiting patiently. He has wide open arms and he desires for you um, to come back around. He desires to um, bring about transformation in your life. So if you're feeling this way, um, God's not mad. Come on back. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Come on back. So that's the first thing we need to remember. The second thing is that do what works for you. Um, for me, spiritually speaking, uh, reading and really like intentionally quiet mornings um, are some of the things that, that get me out of my slump. So like I said, I picked up Ruth Haley Barton's book again. Um, but also, it's God is really gracious because the past two mornings, he's woken me up 30 minutes before my alarm. And instead of trying to go back to sleep, I get up, I go to my couch, and I've read some scripture. And it has been really life-giving. So he's even helping me along the way. So I know myself, and I know that those are things that help to pull me back into the presence of God where I can be transformed and that might look different for you. That might look like going on a kayaking trip or cooking a really good meal or spending time in community uh, with your friends and just seeking the presence of the Lord there. Um, I think it's really important to, I, I've said it once, I'll say it again, there's no one right way to connect with God. God made each of us unique. And of course, scripture and prayer are central to the Christian life. Um, but there are a lot of different ways that those, can, those uh, disciplines, all of the disciplines can play out. So know that God's not mad at you. Do what works for you to get out of your slump. Uh, the third thing is baby steps. I know that sometimes when I realize that I'm like, oh God, we haven't really talked in a while. I like, like run to try to like get back to a point that I was like, I'm sorry, I've, I've drifted. And it's kind of like a panicked, um, sort of return, but it's okay to take baby steps. It's okay to reestablish your disciplines. If you are reading large swaths of scripture, read a chapter a day, slowly work yourself up. Um, if you've been spending hours in prayer and all of a sudden you're not, um, start with 15 minutes so we can work ourselves back into it um, with baby steps. There's grace for us. God is patient. Give yourselves patience or be patient with yourself. And finally, I think the most, the key thing in all of this is that only God transforms. Um, when, when we say the best way to show up to leadership, the best way to show up to life is to bring your transforming self is really to say, show up to life hand in hand with the Holy Spirit because God is, transforms us. We can position ourselves. We can put ourselves in quiet spaces, on that kayak, um, in that library, whatever that might look like for you. We position ourselves for transformation, but the only one who makes us our best transforming selves, who is always growing, always trying to connect, always seeking to be Christ-like Christ -like in this world, um, God's the one that establishes that. God is the one that does that. So believe me, I've tried to show up in that way in my own strength, and it doesn't work. It just is another mask for us to wear, and there are enough of those in the world. So... Um, in all of this, remember that you are not the one who needs to manufacture anything. You, uh, you don't make you uh, the, your best transforming self. God is already doing that. God is in the business of transformation. He welcomes you. He's excited about the journey that he has you on. Um, 
So my encouragement this morning for myself, for all of us, for anyone that might be feeling this way, that might someday feel this way, uh, slow down, turn back, give yourself grace, receive grace from God, and be transformed. So with that, friends, First United Methodist Church, I love you. I'm thinking of you, praying for you as always. I hope everybody has a really good Thursday, and I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Take care.